is from Isaiah. This is one of my favourites yeah. too. It's the people in darkness have seen a great light and God calls us to be a light for others. Yes. How do we best do this? Uh, very good question. Uh, like when you read a verse like that, uh, which obviously is a verse I quoted as mm. well in the first century, you read a verse like that and you realise that we need to become the light of the world. But, but most people don't understand how this is accomplished. It's not accomplished through your words or your deeds necessarily. It's accomplished first by your heart changing. Mm -hmm. In the first century, I referred very frequently to this concept that you had to build your faith on a solid foundation. And the solid foundation is, is not to do it all intellectually, mm -hmm. but rather that your heart changes and causes you to take specific actions. Does that make sense? So, so what I was constantly recommending, and many of the illustrations that I gave in the first century were illustrating the way the heart will have to change. Remember I talked about old wineskin and a new, mm -hmm. wine, a new wine and an old wineskin? Because the old wineskin yes. was rigid yes. and could not stretch. Yes. If you and put new burst. wine in it mm -hmm. while it was still fermenting and everything, what would happen? It would just burst, mm -hmm. right? So a new wine needed a new wineskin mm -hmm. that, that could stretch with the changes that were happening to the wine. Mm -hmm. and, and this was an illustration, for example, of how the soul changes. If the soul is going to change, it's going to need to stretch. It's going to need to be mm. transformed. It's going to be challenged, mm. if you like. Mm. And all of these illustrations were alluding to, this, to the book of Isaiah with that's how your light comes to shine to the world, by your soul's emotions changing from being unloving to being loving. Mm. Now, the average Christian, I feel, on the planet at the moment does not understand this. Because the average Christian is antagonistic towards a person who's an unbeliever, attacking towards a person who's an unbeliever, critical of a person who's an unbeliever, and judgmental of a person who's an unbeliever. Now, these are emotions that are not attractive. Mm. They are emotions that are dark, mm -hmm. in fact. They darken your soul. Now, if a person truly receives God's love into their heart, those emotions don't exist anymore. So they become bright. And, and I was also referring to the fact, and this was something to help spirits, I was referring to the fact that as your soul condition improves, your spirit body actually physically becomes brighter. So this was a way to tell from a spirit's perspective whether a person they were was listening to or were listening to were actually in a developed state or not. Yes. So a spirit, when he looks at another spirit lecturing him, on yes. different principles, he can look at the soul and go, how dark are you in compared to myself now? Mm. Oh, wow, I'm brighter than you are. Why am I listening to you for? <laughs> <laughs> you see? Why am I listening to somebody who's so dark? Yeah. And uh, this is a great way of determining truth when you're in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. But also, once a person is enlivened by the word of God in their heart, they will feel brighter to be with and more attractive to be with while yes. the person's on earth. A lot of people came to listen to me in the first century, not because of anything I said, and not because of anything that I, you know, miracle yes. that I've supposedly performed, but just because they felt good yes. in my company. Yes, yes. <laughs> and the yes. reason why they felt good in my company is they didn't feel judged, mm -hmm. they didn't feel lectured, they didn't feel like I was yelling and screaming at them mm -hmm. telling them what to do all the time, and they didn't feel all of these things that, that they did feel from their... Pharisees and Sadducees, their religious leaders. And so they felt very attracted to that. And this is what it means to let your light shine mm -hmm. to the world. Your light is your, is your attractiveness. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go out and lecture the world about what is right and what is wrong. What you need to do yourself is to bring yourself into harmony with what is right mm. and what is wrong and make sure that you personally have the, the love that mm. is present inside of your soul once you do that, it will become obvious to anyone who has an open heart around you that something has changed. Right. That something is different. And to have your light covered with a, as they say, don't cover it with a bushel. Yeah. Or a basket. If or a you basket. Use a modern day term. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what, what would that mean? What, what would you be doing? Would you be holding back? Would you be hiding? You'd be... Fear. I was fear. Told. I was talking mm. about the relationship between fear and desire. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people have these sparks of desire that get generated in them, but because of their fear and okay. their terror, 
they never let that light or spark shine. Yeah. And I was talking about how, you know, w- with regard to the way we work with God, when we allow God to transform our heart, it generates within us certain passions and desires to be different, to, mm-hmm. be, to share and be different, be ourselves and all sorts of things. Now, that is letting our light shine. But if we put it under a basket yes. or a bushel under a, in, inside of an enclosure, the light can't shine. Mm. Why would we hide our light? Mm. The only reason why we'd hide our, hide our light is because we're afraid of mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was referring to. There were, I, I could see that many of the people who were following me in the first century were very afraid of confronting through their changed feelings, confronting the world around them. For example, many of the men wanted to have a better relationship with their wives. Mm-hmm and a more open relationship like I had with Mary. Mm-hmm. So what, what do they do? They start to practice that and many of the other men criticise them mm. and pull them down mm. and treat them badly and they became afraid. Mm. And so then they shut down their yes. own light. Many of the women, you know, they'd be inspired to have a more open and honest relationship with their men, to work through sexual issues and all sorts of things. They'd go home to their men and because their men were, had a tendency towards violence, the women would become afraid and shut themselves down Mm. and as a result would be hiding their light Mm. under a basket. And so this is what I was also referring to, this tendency to allow fear to guide our actions rather than desire. Now, I feel for for Christians today, many Christians today allow fear because because they are even afraid to confront the status quo within Christianity. Like I've read many blogs written by Christian people, and Mary is a favourite respondent of some blogs written by Christians, where the person challenges the status quo. Well, for example, the belief about God, that God is a punishing, wrathful God. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we know of this guy in the USA who challenges that with all the people around him, saying he doesn't believe that's true. Mm. And but they're, all, they're all quoting the Bible back at him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's saying, well, no doesn't matter what you say, the Bible yeah. says, I can't feel God as like that and God's certainly not like that to mm. me uh, and so I can't believe that, whether the Bible says it or not. And he gets hammered by Christians who are just wanting to stay in this mm. zone of wanting to believe the Bible is God's word. Mm. Whereas, see, he's letting his light shine. He's yes. not afraid. Yes. He's not afraid even of being judged by his own people. Mm. As a result, he still feels like he's a Christian. He still has a belief in God. He has some erroneous beliefs about myself. But, but he is letting his light shine mm. because he's confronting the general attitude and opinions of the Christians around him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that's a beautiful thing to do, mm. always a beautiful mm. thing. Mm. Oh. So that verse in Isaiah is inspirational. Oh, I love that verse. <laughs> <laughs>